Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Red Dead Online. If you enjoy this video, please pretend like you're going to be intimate with someone, but then instead of whispering naughty things in their ear, simply whisper subscribe to Modest Pelican Gaming, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Alright, welcome back to another fun-filled adventure where the only thing we don't explore are each other's bodies. The stealth Omato joins and immediately calls me fat, which is harsh but fair. I don't take too kindly to body shaming though, so I kill him, because I'm a strong, fat, independent man who strongly believes in chivalry. I'm the kind of guy who will hold the door open for a fine lass and then send her an unsolicited yet tasteful dick pic later that night because it's not creepy now that she knows I open doors. Speaking of fine lasses, today we'll also be joined by our good friend Maddie. On a serious note, her boyfriend, who's a real legend, was recently in a car accident and actually went into intensive care, so pretty scary stuff. On the plus side, it's now the perfect time to aggressively hit on her because he can't do much about it. Might even pop over to their house later and steal his stuff. Of course I'm kidding, and we all wish Wade a speedy recovery. Anyway, at this point, half the town has gathered to look up Maddie's dress, and I mean it's pretty hot, but it's not family-friendly content. This Randy Malacca has also started a minor gang war. We can't be getting distracted like this, as we've got important things to do today, so I come up with a solution. A fair fist fight to the death, and then we all have to behave ourselves. Also, for the first time ever, Stealth Okabo is joining us on Red Dead, so a warm welcome to him. We decide whoever wins this fight will become the Alpha Epic Gamer, which is probably the most esteemed title you could ever earn. Professor Paul Preston, who was recognised for his diplomatic service and went on to be literally knighted by the Queen of England in 2018, was quoted saying, This knighthood ain't a thing, ho. I just want to defeat Modest Pelican and become the Alpha Epic Gamer. Inspiring stuff. Anyway, being this thick gives me an advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat and I emerge victorious. Mato then proceeds to stab me, which is some innovative outside-the-box thinking. GG well played. We ride out, and essentially we've been trying to establish our moonshine business and it's going reasonably well. For the final business upgrade, we'll need $825, which is pretty expensive, so it's time to start hustling. Fortunately, you are looking at the absolute best in the business. Let's go do a bounty, gamers. <laughs> that, that ledge needs a sign or something. That is just brutal. Jesus Christ. We pick a bounty, and I accidentally choose one we've already done. I'll skip over it for your viewing pleasure, as I'd hate this series where we spend every single episode building the same moonshine shack business and crashing horses to get repetitive. The important thing is, we earn some cash money. Apparently, there's more money to be made up north, so we get ready to ride up there. On our way, we ride past a player called Secluded Snail 39 that nickname is so cute and innocent that it makes me think he's almost definitely a sexual predator. Go on, where you go? Wait, no, I don't got no food. I'm gonna die. Let's go. You know, you won't die. You just won't be able to run. Oh my god, or... he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Someone <laughs> shot him just. <laughs> I knew that Secluded Snail 39 was dodgy. I waved at him and everything, yet he still snipes us all in the head. Fortunately, Stealth Omato gets revenge and then proceeds to aggressively teabag his corpse. But as we are intellectuals, it got us thinking. What if we got two of his corpses and conducted the elusive double teabag? I immediately go and kill the big shelled mollusk again and deliver the body to Stealth Omato. Haters will say gamers don't do anything with their lives, but look at this contemporary interpretive art. It suddenly becomes apparent that we've become extremely distracted from the task at hand yet again. Fortunately, I've been growing as an individual, and I've learned to let things go. I decide not to get my revenge an excessive amount of times, and I especially don't defile his corpse. That's not family friendly. Alright, so onwards to Van Horn Trading Post. We accept the bounty to track down and kill the Rolden step-siblings. This could potentially be quite a steamy mission. 
For real though, I never actually understood the stepsister fetish. I also think society doesn't fully appreciate the brave souls out there who rate and comment on adult videos for us. I saw a comment once and it said, I couldn't suspend my disbelief because the male vocals were too loud. And I thought, well shiver me timbers mate, that doesn't sound good at all, so I clicked away just in time. Thank you MILF Slayer 404. Anyway, Marto and I get extremely distracted investigating beavers. Fascinating creatures, but yeah. Meanwhile, Maddie and Stealth Carbo let one of the bounties escape. It looks like while we were busy expanding our minds, they were doing a damn bad job. Get it? Because beavers build dams? Maybe I'll become a beaver channel, just like National Geographic, but just for beavers and with worse production quality. That's an untouched niche. $12 in the bank which is good, but quite frankly we need to accelerate the savings plan. We can't just observe beavers and hit industrial vapes all day, we need a game changer. It's time to start collecting. That really sounds anticlimactic doesn't it, but hey it pays so well you can't be mad. We grab several trinkets and one of them is on a cliff and I suddenly have an urge to try to bungee jump. I won't be the one jumping though as that's more risky than premarital handholding. I'll be the belayer. Marto leaps, trusting I'll lasso him, but the auto lock doesn't go too well and he falls to his death. It's then Maddie's turn, but I get the timing wrong and she too falls to her death. Surprisingly, Carbo is still down to try and it actually briefly works, but he ends up swinging like a pendulum, splatting onto the side of the cliff and dies a pretty horrific death. We'll call this exercise moderately successful. Marto and Maddie go off to buy a new horse. But given the new scientific beaver direction I see this channel rapidly heading towards, we push on with the experiment. Many carbos were harmed during the making of this picture, but eventually we realise the rope just snaps from his weight. The best we can do is hang each other off a waterfall, which is basically just a subgenre of waterboarding. I actually don't know why everyone always complains about waterboarding. Like in contrast, imagine being stoned to death, which literally has no benefits. Sure, waterboarding is basically simulated drowning, but at least you can hydrate. I say we make waterboarding great again by bringing it back to schools nationwide as a harsh but fair disciplinary measure. Anyway, we head back to Valentine to see this new horse and as we arrive this sexy girl rocks up and I decide to shoot my shot. There's this pickup technique called negging, where you emotionally manipulate the girl you're interested in by flirting in such a way that undermines her confidence. I proceed to tell her that she smells bad and she proceeds to shoot me in the head with a bolt action rifle. We'll call this moderately successful and it's time to see Marto's horse. Look at her, she's a beauty. Oh. Jeff, I know what you're about to do, piss off. I'm down, I'm just gonna test something. <laughs> <laughs> we continue collecting like crazy and honestly it's all thanks to Maddie. We would not be this organised without her. Sometimes I'm playing a video game and I have this rare moment of self-reflection where I question my actions. Even though it's all virtual, I think to myself, wow Jeff, what are you doing with your life? This is one of those moments. As we head off, Marto crashes into me with his new horse and it dies again. Ah well, no point letting it go to waste, am I right? Kidding, this meat isn't from Marto's horse, that'd be sadistic, we're eating the stable hand. It's so damn wholesome travelling the country finding items. Well at least it was wholesome until a player called God6IX decided he is going to try to assassinate us. IX is 9 in Roman numerals, so his game attack is God69, which is just peak gamer. We easily evade him and actually end up assassinating the big girl ourselves, earning a cool $11.87 in the process. Look, you guys know I love having a laugh as much as the next coroner, but real talk for a moment. 69 is a sexual position and unless you're married, I insist you do not engage in such sinful behaviour. With only one trinket left to collect for a full collection, we make our way to the desert town Armadillo where the last one is located. This town was wiped out by a plague which is sad, but again silver lining. 
Marto and I find our future wives. Damn, you came here for a gaming video, briefly learned about beavers, and now I imagine you're crying from overwhelming emotional joy. Marto decides to consummate his marriage right here, but discovers his wife is actually a man. I hate it so damn much when that happens. I think we've all been there more times than we care to admit. At long last, I can sell all the items we've collected to Madame Nazar and make absolute bank in the process. Now it's time to head back to the Moonshine Shack. I decide to fast travel, which means my wife won't be able to come with me, which is actually okay, as I always imagined settling down with a woman who wasn't decomposing. Like my moonshine manager, Maggie. Now that's a real woman, she's got it all. A walking stick, a top button done up, a pulse. Most importantly though, I buy the condenser upgrade and because we leveled up so much last time, I can also buy the polished copper upgrade straight away. Lads and lasses, we can now make top quality moonshine. I get a batch brewing for next episode and then head out to meet the crew for celebrations. Unfortunately, I ride right off a cliff and my horse dies, but a random player revives my steed for no reason. For every secluded snail 39, there's a Merrick MP to restore your faith in gamers. Nothing like a rewarding fishing session, but you see it's not as relaxing as it normally would be because whenever someone catches a fish, the others get jealous and kill them. Of course, by the others, I mean Marto and me. Anyway, Stealth carbo has been uploading a lot on his own YouTube channel recently. His last upload was actually his perspective of today's fun-filled family adventure. I highly rate his videos and I'll link his channel in the description. Otherwise, I hope you absolute legends are doing well. Thanks for watching and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time and as always, stay classy.